Okay, for this problem we want to find the intercepts and asymptotes and graph. And so the first thing when we do x-intercepts and you have a, a rational function like we have here, what we need to do is set the top always equal to zero whenever you want to find the x-intercept. So if we set that equal, if x equals x minus two, and then we get x is equal to two, and that would be your x-intercept, so we can fill that in over here. Next. Uh, the y-intercept is where you put in a 0 for x. So if we do that, we get 0 minus 2 over 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3. And then I end up getting uh, negative 2 over negative 3, which is the same thing as uh, 2 thirds. So 2 thirds would go right here. So that, that's the intercepts. Now we also want to do the, uh, the vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptote. Uh, we talked about this in problem number one that you solve for that by setting the bottom always equal to zero. So top is used for x-intercept, the bottom is used for the uh, vertical asymptotes. Now for the bottom one, we need to factor that one. Uh, and so if we factor that one, we're going to get one and three. And then we just need to decide which one's going to be the, the negative. If we want to get a negative two x there, which means that the negative has to go with the uh, larger number, so we have plus 1 and a minus 3. And if you set those equal, you're going to get x is equal to negative 1 and 3. Now when we put that here, make sure you put x equals. Now it's okay if you want to go ahead and list it like I did here. You can put x equals 1 comma 3, that's fine. As long as you have an x equals in there somewhere, that's going to be okay uh, to write it that way. Um, you can also separate it if you want to as well. So x equals negative 1, and then x equals 3. If you want to split it up, that's okay as well. For the horizontal one, the horizontal one, uh, so HA, uh, this requires some rules. And the rules have to do with the highest power on top and the highest power on bottom. Now the, what the situation we have set up here is you've got a higher power on the bottom than you do on the top. So what you can say here is the rule that we're using is the n would represent the highest power or the degree on top, that is less than m, which is the degree of the highest power you have on the bottom. Whenever you have this situation set up, we talked about our different rules. When that happens, automatically your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So we're going to put that in right here, y equals zero. So now we have all the preliminary uh, information. Okay, so now we have all this, we're ready to graph it. So hopefully you have all this. Uh, we're going to erase this here so we have some space and then we're going to do the, the graph. Uh, so this information we're going to put on the graph first. So I got my intercepts that I'm going to do there. Uh, X-intercept is 2 so it crosses at 2 comma 0. The Y-intercept is 2 thirds so if I uh, put that there it's going to be about right here. Now we also have these vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes are going to be at negative 1 and 3. So I'm going to show those by putting in some uh, vertical dotted lines. So here's one that goes through uh, at 3 and the other one goes through at uh, negative 1. So we start with that as our setup. Now on the ends here, uh, we're going to have dotted lines on the end because that's our horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Now. We have to figure out where the graph actually is in each one of these pieces. Now on this end, on the two ends, the graph can either be above or below. So because the graph doesn't give us enough information to determine that, this is where you're going to resort to your uh, test numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test a number that is to the left of that vertical asymptote, and I'm going to test one that's to the right, because that way I want to see where exactly it is. So let's try uh, negative 2. So we're going to test x equals negative 2. We're going to put that into uh, the original function. And all I'm concerned about uh, is where it actually is, if it's above or below. Now I'm actually going to uh, plot that point when I'm done. So I do want to figure out what the actual y value is by plugging it in. So if I do that, I get negative 2 minus 2 over negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 and then minus 3. So when I do that, I get negative 4 on top. And the bottom, I get 4 plus 4, uh, 8 minus 3 is 5. So I get negative 4 fifths uh, as a result uh, from that one. Uh, so uh, that means that it's going to be plotted here. So it's going to be at negative 2 and negative 4 fifths. So negative 2 and negative 4 fifths will be about uh, right there. 
that tells me that the graph is going to be down here in that lower left hand uh, quadrant there. So the graph is going to follow this horizontal one, it'll hit that point and then it's going to fall and look something like that. So that would be the first test point will give you uh, that one. Now we do want to also do a test point on the to the right of the vertical asymptote. So you should have this, I'm going to erase this and now we're going to try another test number. So this time we're going to try test uh, positive 4, x equals positive 4. And we'll, again we'll put that into our equation, so 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3. And by doing that, it's going to give us, as a result, a 2 on top. We have 16 minus 8 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5. So I get 2 fifths for that one. Now 2 fifths is going to be uh, about right here, so pretty close to the x-axis, it's about 0.2. So if I do that, the graph is going to now fall it's going to hit this point and then follow the, the horizontal one. So we do want to get these two points in here that's going to tell us exactly where it is and give us a little bit more detail about this graph. Right, now next, uh, we need to figure out what's happening in between the two vertical asymptotes. So in the lecture notes, I talked about that you could have one of four shapes in the middle there. Either it'd be the parabola opening up, parabola opening down, it could be a uh, a, a cube, a cubic, or a negative cubic. So it could be any of these uh, four patterns that's always going to go in the middle between the two vertical asymptotes. We're just going to choose the one that best fits. Now, you could do test points here if you wanted to, but if we take a look at the way the points are oriented here, we have enough information to tell what exactly it'll look like in the middle. This one right here is the one that we're going to use because that's the only one that really fits the data that we have there. So it's going, to, it's going to follow this one, it's going to hit that point, it's going to have the curve and hit that point, and then it's going to come down and follow the other one, the other vertical asymptote, and that's what your graph will look like. So that's the only model that really fits the, all these other shapes that we have. So sometimes the graph may, have, may give you enough information where you don't have to use any test points.